Hello everyone and welcome back to Torchlight Infinite Christmas Edition. Today I'll be showcasing a little bit of my uh, my League Starter character, which is the Lightning Beam, uh, the new skill that each time you cast it summons us a little, you know, this little orb that actually mimics mimics your your ability up to the number of, of maximum beams that you have. Um, recently, the, the, the latest thing I've done is clear the up to T7. So now I'm gonna begin mapping T7 to get to, to T8 and hopefully end up within the top 10 for the for the Traveler 8 kills. Let's do a, a quick map showcase. I need a lot of flame sand right now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on that. Fluorescent. That's a cube. That's a whim. Give me three. There you go. These are basically wild card bubbles. Um, each of them can have any type of rewards. And then when you open this, you get the monsters. You kill the monsters. And then you, you get to select another of the upgrades. The mechanic seems a little bit complicated at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's not, not as hard. Basically, what you want to do is to get the, the biggest amount of bubbles that you, that you can and get them to red if possible, or legendary at least. For instance, if you get red commodities, you're guaranteed to get, I don't know, three or four FE per bubble. And you can, you can proc a lot of, I need to, I need to switch to my X. You can proc, I have no, I have this one, which is commodities. What I want to do is adding more commodities that are purple is pretty good. I don't really take a look at none of this because I haven't died a lot, but uh, that might change on tier 7 actually. Regarding this skill, I think there are a little bit of the problems to solve for the skill which is clear. What I did was to get an ex blue chest which requires you to actually get some radius for it to feel good. But when it proxies, somewhat noticeable, as you may see there. Also, AoE increases the beam length. So you want to get either beam length or increase area of effect of skills. To improve coverage. I think the skill has very very high synergy with spellburst because you need to cast it five times for it to span a bubble so let me show you. I have no bubbles I have no bubbles right now so I have five spellburst charges. I cast it once and I spawn a bubble and then once again another bubble and so on and so forth and uh, I don't know if like the auras double deep with the bubbles. I think if, if they did, uh, damage would be much higher than it is. Or maybe they don't. But you can see that the bubbles have like the aura icons on them. Which make, makes it seem that way. But it might just be, you know, just a visual effect. They also improve the, the cube animation speed, which makes me want to cube a lot this season. Because the rewards were pretty good, but um, after a while it becomes annoying to, to click them. Click them a lot to get the rewards. So, uh, here, crafted a little bit just to make T7 comfortable. I need to get energy here, but you know, plus spell burst. And that's basically the only thing that matters here. The explode chest and resistances. 
uh, plus one lightning, some cast speed, some resistance. Uh, this, I bought it for this, for the beam length. But the Rugenian Interbrand is pretty good for sustain. You know, just a energy shield belt with some resistances. I want to get much higher movement speed and I have this own additional focus blessing that I'll be cast, uh, crafting as soon as I get more flame sand. The ring, I crafted this uh, recently, which is plus one focus and uh, skill radius is good, but it's not the almost important mod here. Plus one focus is the most important. I would like more, you know, tier one lightning. Energy shield is good. Get some more resistances, like the hybrid resistance mod is really good with uh, elemental and erosion. And uh, crit damage will be the ultimate. Uh, same thing here. You know, both rings will probably be the same. And for the for the staff, I think this mod gives a lot of damage. You could get the belt, which gives plus plus two, and maybe use you know dual ones or dual uh, daggers for crit damage. But I'm testing this version right now. I think it works it works decently enough. Uh, of course, the staff needs to be crafted. I need to. I should actually. Uh, I'll do I'll do that later. But yeah, need to divide this to plus two. I bought this for 6 CFE, as it is. It will probably cost you a bit more to craft something similar to this because of the the amount of flame sand you need to roll it until you hit another T1, especially this, which is rare. So that's why I thought 6 CFE for this what was pretty much worth it. Before that, I was using this, which again had the plus 4 beams and, you know, some other damage mods. Uh, rocking, you know, max res, getting... Um, little bit of spell uh, casting speed, getting uh, shock chance. Shock chance is very important because the skill hits. The damage effectiveness of the skill is very low, but because you get uh, more balls that repeat the cast, you're basically getting a lot of hits. So you want to make use of those hits by getting shocks and shock settles. So you can maximize, you know, you, you cast it once and then if you can settle all the shocks in one hit, you're getting a massive amount of damage out of the skill. Uh, so it says here, right, for every plus one beams, the skill increases the Thunderbolt generation. The Thunderbolt is the, the little balls and the number of beams generated by the skill is not affected by the beam quantity bonuses, means that the skill itself will not generate additional beams, but generate additional bubbles. And the beam length applies to the skills area and uh, the beam doesn't increase by i don't know by the by the by the skills uh, length and after you reach the maximum thunderbolts you don't generate anymore so they don't get overwritten so they will finish their cast and once the the time has exp expires you you lose them but then you generate them again because of the spell burst so that's why we're using scatter short beam to get additional beams basically you can uh, get, can you basically can can interpret this as fifty percent additional damage, uh, give or take, right? Uh, for each of these, for each beam. Uh, Adeline damage seems pretty good for now. Overload because we're Thea, um, because it's not only an offensive support but also a defensive one. Lightning pen and psychic burst. You know, if you're playing spell burst, this is unbeatable. It's too high of a multiplier. Getting four stat with defensive layers for the um, recovery of energy shield to not stop when taking damage. Speed Phantom gives you spell damage. Uh, Psychic Surge, every time I use Speed Phantom, I get additional damage for the next spell burst. Magic Dash for the charge and uh, extra movement speed. Secret Rudging makes you get the spell burst charges a little bit faster. Uh, Mana Boil is, you know, it's staple on every spellcaster build. If you get a Fiveling, you can add. You can add self-sacrifice for even more damage. You could add... Uh, I think self-sacrifice is the only one that, that's worth adding. Uh, Thunderbolt, uh, Thunder Spirit for the for the cast speed. Electric Punishment, so I'm using Thunder Imbue and Thunder Spirit to both uh, trigger an additional shock. Uh, they get this, which doesn't matter. They cannot inflict shock, doesn't matter for the spirit because I don't care for it. Generated shock and thunder imbue cannot shock anyway, uh, or the thunder strike cannot produce shock anyway, so it's good. 
Marcus have a very high multiplier. It's 40% additional crit damage taken by enemies. Um, ultra defense with Frost Shield. I think Frost Shield is the best, you know, uh, default uh, defensive skill. You have another. You have other options like Protection Field is good uh, when running any minions. Delayed Pain is amazing, but you need high recovery. With ES, Delayed Pain is good. Uh, so that's another option. Aegis of Fire, if you're playing Block... Uh, I don't know. I don't think it's great. Obscure is good if you if you're doing blur. And uh for start with a rain running. Uh, energy fortress, of course. We are an ES build. I like the movement speed. And we're running uh this which got changed. It was curse on hit, now it's innate curse. But it's it does the same thing. Uh triggers the curse on hit. Electrocute for additional shock chance and lightning damage taken. LE amp. And a magical source for some mana region. Uh, I still haven't got a candle, and I need to. I need to procure one. Regarding the tree, you know, standard spellburst tree, which is uh, plus plus three spellburst, additional damage, plus we're lightning, so none of these apply to us. Then uh, I'm running magister with bunch and with play safe for the spellburst charge speed. Now getting this for focus blessings then the more focus blessings you get the better this gets it's a very high scaling mechanic uh blade runner i'm running conductive for the extra base shock and then running queer ankle for the lucky damage since uh you know this skill is lightning lightning has a high range but if we trigger lucky we're hitting on the higher range of the the higher part of the range more often which translates to uh you know High, uh, higher average damage. I haven't worked on the slates. I usually worked on slates after I reached 95. So I just entered here whatever I had available. I dropped this corner, which is, you know, calling strike and plus two defensive. Uh, decent, not what I would go for. Um, I will try to maximize the amount of damage I, was, I, I can get on slates because, you know, it's the biggest source of damage. Um, I think that's all uh, for packs, you know, uh, I usually run XP and then for damage, you just put whatever you can get here, like spell damage, double damage, cast, cast speed. I happen to have two of these, which is extremely lucky. Um, but, you know, just put whatever damage here. If you don't have like three damage pets, what you do is you put damage here, damage here. And then whatever here, and and because all of this is damage already, you switch you switch it. For instance, yeah, you use the default the default part of this side, and then you add damage here and damage here, and that should be good enough. I like the extra mana region. I might switch this for uh, for more resistances sometime. Uh, yeah, that that's pretty much the current setup. Uh, Unless I get like really high damage, I will not be making a build guide of this. Uh, I'll I'll see if I get to kill Traveler. Uh, I might keep playing this character. Um, anyway, let me know your thoughts about this new skill. If you're playing it, what are you doing with it? I'm very interested on in seeing what other people might be doing with it. And uh, any ideas that you may have. Like, should I convert this to something, you know? I thought about using poison with it because you get a lot of hits so it makes me think that uh, and also the skill scales with uh with skill duration which poison does as well so i was thinking you know some something something along the, the lines of poison might be might be interesting but that is that was riskier and i i don't want to risk taking too long to get to t8 and kill traveler but, you know, if you're doing something wonky with it, uh, feel free to leave uh, something in the comments. Um, and uh, have, a, have, a, have a good day. Thank you very much for watching.